Welcome back, everyone. Today marks the start of Black History Month, and we're going to kick things off by learning about game changers in the world of wine. So here to highlight some of the trailblazing black winemakers is sommelier Beverly Crandon. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so tell us about representation in the wine industry. It doesn't seem like a terribly diverse like scene. And you're right. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you know what? I, I know we're going to taste some wonderful wines today, but you're right. It has to be said what the numbers look like. Mm -hmm. So in preparation for this, I actually stopped and did some work to see how many licensed wineries are owned by black people here in Canada, and it's less than 1%. As a matter of fact, it's 0.1%. Wow. And then I did the same thing about land under vine, right? Like how many black people own property that they're growing uh, grapevines, and that's 0.6%. Astonishingly, it really parallels what you're seeing in the United States based on a Bloomberg, Bloomberg study. With that being said, though, there are many groups in Canada, such as Vinequity and Vinica, who are working to change that. Yeah. And they're providing scholarships and mentorships, people of color who want to get into wine. So I think I'll be here five years from now, and the landscape will be different. We'll be talking a different story. OK, okay. It's yes, a deal. that's amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yep. Yep. So you're going to tell us some really interesting stories about some winemakers. So let's start first with someone named Steve Byfield. Yes. So, and it's good we're starting with Steve. Steve is actually, so remember I said there's like 0.1% yeah. wineries. So Steve is a 0.1%. We have one black winemaker in Canada, and it's Steve Byfield. Okay. Um, but despite that, like, it's not, that's not the only reason I, I use Steve's wines in events. They're super delicious. Um, Steve now owns his own label called Narai um, and is the head winemaker there. And people always ask me what Narai means. Uh, Narai is African in origin, and it means to be humble. And if you were to meet Steve, it's totally Steve's personality. Um, he is so humble and just a super nice guy. He is so talented that he not only makes wines for his own label, but makes wines for other people, too, who need support in wine. Making. So I, I hope you're going to enjoy this. Okay, I'm really looking forward to trying Steve's wine. So tell us about this particular one that you brought us for us to taste. Right. So what you've got here is the 2020 Folklore, and it's a sparkling wine. And I love this wine because I've used it for things like Esco Beach Fish, <laughs> all kinds of things I've used this for. Um, what's wonderful with Steve's sparkling is that you get soft citrus on the nose, some orchard fruit, some flowers, oh, yeah. and then the palate becomes like oh, ripe fruit on the palate, some apricot and pear. Just wow. wonderful. Wow. That is yeah. like it's really lovely. Wonderful. It's dazzling on the tongue, and I normally oh. don't like something that has a little bit of sweetness, but this is like complicated and perfect. And great acidity, right? Yeah. So it's so good with food. It's gorgeous. Okay, next we're gonna head to South Africa yes. and meet the winemaker from Great Heart Wines. Who is she? Oh my gosh, this, this person, her name is Gaynor Hendricks, and she is such a wonderful human being. I had the benefits of doing an interview with Gaynor and just such a talent. I'm looking forward to drinking more from her. Um, she grew up in the Swartland and is now making wines in the Swartland. I'll let you know something about Gaynor. When she was going to school for viticulture, there's a program there in the Cape where they take the top students and they put them in the protege program where they get to go and do three years worth of internships and so on. Her last one was at a winery called uh, Milanie and Le Estates, and they saw her talent made her assistant winemaker and then gave her her own project where she is the head winemaker, hence Great Heart. One wow. thing else I'm going to say about Great Heart, um, all of the winery workers and the staff, they own a piece of Great Heart. So at the Aww. end of the year, they get paid out uh, dividends as yeah. being uh, shareholders. And it's making a world of difference when you talk to the guys and how they're using that money. So hope you enjoy this one from Gaynor. And what is this creation? <laughs> Tell us about it. So this is their 2021 Chenin Blanc from South Africa. And I love old vine Chenin. And this is a blend of older vines and younger vines. So it okay. adds some complexity. It's fresh. It's crisp. It's wonderful. It's a little smoky too, right? It yeah. is. It yeah. is. You know what it is? It's yeah. that peppery note that you're getting. Okay, got so it. So you get like all the lovely mm -hmm. fruit that you want to get on, on, on the palate, but then some pepper and spice comes in just yeah. to shake it up a little bit. It's good for winter. Wonderful. It's like, it oh, yeah. feels right, good Listen, for Listen, right man, now. this is good for all seasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. Okay, okay we're going to stay in South Africa, but we're moving over to uh, this next wine collective. Yeah. So who, who is her? So Who her, it's the Her Collective, and, and the winemaker is Prezi Delini, but I gotta talk about the group as a whole. So Her is a project where 
a, a few black women in the winemaking industry in, in South Africa got together and said, let's make a brand or a product where everything along the production is black woman led. So okay. from the grape growing to the wine making, from the marketing, the distribution, wow. all black women, of course. When I talk to the guys at her, they say, Beverly, you know, our road to getting here was not easy. So what they've committed to doing, 2% of their profits goes back into a scholarship fund where they're going to give to young students who are Amazing. trying to get education or training so that they can fulfill their dreams. And when you have this wine, exactly, exactly, it has to be applauded. When you have this wine, you can taste their passion. So go ahead, I'm okay, excited. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this particular uh -huh. wine. So this is their Shiraz, it's their 2020 Shiraz. And okay, this wine, you guys, is $14.95. And the complexity on the nose and the palate, it punches way above its wow. weight. Yes. Like it's got all the black currant mm. cherry and it's got like cocoa leather on the on the nose and the palate is as complex. Really sexy. Really? Really? Yes. This is a good Valentine's wine. Totally. Like, just beautiful. This is a good Tuesday night pizza wine. It's a good <laughs> Wednesday night pizza wine. It's all, all night. It's wonderful. <gasps> okay, we're gonna end uh, with an American winemaker. Tell us more about Andre Mack. Yeah, oh, Andre is a force. So Andre um, is a writer, he is a winemaker, a designer. Uh, one of his books, 99 Bottles, is my favorite. Um, he has a, a great history in bio. He's worked at uh, French Laundry in California, per se in New York, oh, wow. but started to make wine in 2007 in Oregon, um, and that's where he's really shining now, uh, I would say. One thing I love about Andre when you meet him, he is his authentic self. And imagine back in the early 2000s, going into the room being the only black white uh, sommelier. Yeah. That would be hard to do, but he does it, and you taste it through his wine. So this wine today is called Horse shoes and hand grenades. Oh, okay. Wow. Title. okay. Very provocative. But you all, this is his um, Bordeaux blend. Uh, so all the grapes that would go into a Bordeaux red is in this. And those are big grapes. But man, I'm telling you, wow. this thing is so smooth. It but is scary is, smooth. Like you could drink way too much. It is much. both horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah. Like there is like, it goes in smooth yeah. and comes out hard. <laughs> yep. and, it's true. And you know, I, I, okay. All of these wines are available in our market. Um, we're actually doing an event February 15th. 15th, where people can taste these wines, but they're all available. Go out, taste them. Super, super delicious. And just a fragment of what we have being made by black winemakers now. Beverly, uh, thank you so Cheers. much for sharing these incredible trailblazers with us today. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers to everyone watching. Hey there. Wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.